Good to be with y'all today. And this almost November. Thanksgiving, and then they'll be putting the Christmas lights out, and it'll all be over, and it'll be January again, won't it? 2024, maybe. Who knows where it will Always, it's going to continue on. As long as the sun rises and the moon sets and the seasons change, God said, that's what it'll be until he decides that it's not going to be no more. And that's when it'll end, no matter what man thinks. Uh, our lesson this morning is going to come from the book of John, part of it. We're going to be all in the Bible. I want to look at a word there that's found in John. We, John chapter 3. We're all familiar with that. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, one of the Pharisees, and also a ruler, he came to Jesus and he, he, he had some questions. Of course, he, he told Jesus that, you know, we know you're from God, that no man can do these miracles except they be from God. And then in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want to drop down to <clears throat> verse 14 is where I want to focus this morning. And it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And that word I want to look at is must. That's the word I, I, I want to look at. We want to look at about six or seven places where that word is used. That word must in the Greek is D. D-E-I is what it is in the Greek. And the meaning is necessary. It's necessary. It ought. It should be. And I want to look at places in seven places in Scripture that it is that it is used. We we need to understand that when that word must is used, it means necessary. There's a lot of synonyms for that word. Synonym is a word that means the same thing as the other word. Must prerequisite, a requirement, imperative, obligation, a condition, or a commitment. The words that the world uses a lot in that other place is might, may, and that's not what that word means. May and might is completely different than must. One must. Because in today's world, we, we, see, we see and hear so many other ways to get into the Lord to be saved. We see those things, and we see people that we think a lot of a lot of times, uh, family people and friends and, and things, and they talk to us, and they say, well, you know, you really don't have to do those things. It's not a must that you do those things. Well, the Bible says it is. So when we think of what we need to do to get to heaven, it, it's kind of what the Bible says, don't it? Here you know. Can't be what 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 man says. Can't be a table. It can't be, can it? No. You know, it can't be a feeling. It just can't be what man says that it makes makes a difference. But in John three fourteen it says, "And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up." That's talking about Jesus Christ. That there was no way that Jesus was going to come to Earth. And be the perfect sacrifice and not be lifted up on the cross, suspended. That it had to be. It was a must. That's what was going to happen. But in order for that to do that, in order for him to be that perfect sacrifice, he had to be sinless. He had to be what God desired him to be and what he desired to be. Because every time Jesus Christ was tempted. He used one thing and one thing only to answer him. And what was that? Word. Scripture. He, he used scripture. So when we have friends approach us or we're in a conversation with someone, what should we use? We should use scripture, not a feeling, not an opinion. Everybody here's got an opinion about something. But that's not what we need to have. That's not what we need to arm ourselves with. We need to arm ourselves with scripture with scripture just as Jesus did. That there Christ was and is the only way we could or we can 
have redemption. There is no other way that we can have it. There, there is no name under heaven. There is no other way. In John 3.16, right there, right there where we're at, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the NIV. It's, it, 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 it's, it's another version, international version, the NIV. It says right there in place of that should, it says shall. Well, should is a completely different word than shall, just as must is a completely different word than may or might. You know, they want to say, well, if you're baptized, you may go to heaven. Well, if you're not baptized, you might go to heaven anyway. That's not true. That's 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 an untruth. You know, it's just it's just that it's just that way, but it's the only way. And in, in John 14, at verse 6, it tells us a lot of familiar with that. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man come to the Father but by me. So when they say, well, you know, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to be baptized. Galatians 3, 26, 27 tells us, as many of us have been baptized, have put on Christ. We have been baptized into Christ. That's the only way. So when they say these things, they don't understand what these words mean. One of the first things that we need to get individuals that we're studying with or that we're talking to, to come to understand and to us, to come to an understanding with each other is that these words mean things. That you cannot take a word, must, and make it mean may. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You cannot take a word should, that is a direct that, that's going to happen, and put shall, may be a probability. It's two different words, two completely different words. And if you, if you, yeah. You can't Add to or take away from it mm -hmm. to Revelation. Yeah. satisfy what you think. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. Well, that's the number one thing, Brother Jamie. It, it boils down. You take everything away, and it simply boils down to what somebody wants to do. Yeah. You know, that that's the thing. Total acceptance. E each and every one of us is individuals and if we will be honest with ourselves we do what we want to do what's really on our minds to do if something's laying on us and it stays with us we're going to do it that's just that's just how it is so when you submit yourself to the word of god and when you submit yourself to i'm going to believe and accept what these words mean that's why I stress to people that study the Bible to have a strong. Because I don't know how many of y'all, I'm, I'm not. I'm not educated in Greek or Hebrew. As you can tell by my pronunciation and my vocabulary. I, I'm not there, and, and I've accepted completely. I'm not going to get there, you know. My, my days of learning like that is probably in the, in the evening sun anyway, you know. But, uh, we probably but, don't know when you do it wrong. <laughs> but, hey, that's a blessing's come everywhere. <laughs> but, but that Strong's, it has the Hebrew and it has the Greek. And it has every word that's in the Bible. And you can look at the definition of it. And, and I really, really recommend having one of those if you're studying the Bible. Because a lot of times the words in the Greek and Hebrew. They don't mean what they mean to us today. They do not mean what they mean to us today. And to completely understand what's being said, we need to understand that meaning of that word that was used then. Because this is the language the Bible was written in. And we need to understand what that, what that says with that. But when we understand that Christ was that day and is this day, the only way to enter into heaven is through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. There is no other way. When people tell us that it's not necessary, that there's another way that you can do it, it's simply not true. It's a falsehood. And we must get people that we love and we, we, we study with 
to understand that it's a falsehood. And it's hard. So, you know, it's hard. Family and people that believe are already saved and they don't need it. That's the hardest people I've ever met. Every kind of talk to it. You know, the first things out of their mouth, I know. I know. But no, you don't know. But that's what I'm telling you. You know, but then when you start telling people they don't know, well, that kind of gets on their nerves too, don't it? You know? Right? But the word tells them the truth. They, they, it, it, it plainly tells them, just like he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And, and, and they've already been saved, and they're, you know, and, and you can't get them past that. Most of the time, you can't. I mean, you, you can have study after study. You know, well, I was only baptized to, because I felt like that I needed to. That didn't what that Mark 16 say. It says exactly, you know, the simple things. I know you want to know Hebrew and Greek and everything, but just simple, plain words that, that, have, that we have in front of us, they want to twist it, or even mark it out. I mean, Greer Barter uh, said that he was talking with someone, and it wasn't in their Bible because they blacked it out and marked. But that didn't help a thing. It just, it just, it just blacked it out in his, his Bible. Well, I had to black it out everywhere, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I don't want to read it. I'm, on, I'm going to black it out. That's going to change it, right? That's just, that's just, but it is truly the hardest thing to do uh, is to try to talk with someone that believes they're educated in the Bible, they're knowledgeable in the Bible, and they can give you some, some verses, they can give you some, some books, you know, they, they can give you some places, but they don't understand what they're saying. They haven't taken the time to study God's Word. Reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is like a book. It don't do you no good. I, I say, I shouldn't say it doesn't do you any good, yet I'm sure you, you'll gain something from it, but you have to study the Bible. You have to study it. Study to show thyself to bring the word and then not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. If you can rightly do something, what's the other side of it? You can wrongly do it, you know? You, you, you can wrongly in, in the book of Acts, chapter 4. The, the book of Acts, chapter 4. So when you get there, read verse 12. 12. Uh -huh. Nor is there salvation in the other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which men must be saved. Whereby we must be saved. Whereby we must be saved. You have to have that. That must. It's, it's a requirement. There's no other name. There's no other name. All of all don't get it. That's not that's not how we're saved. Buddha, Buddha don't get it. It doesn't get it. Those Confucius or whatever Confucius, I, they don't get it. Those names don't get it. They have tried to bring forth the Pope. Amen. Don't get it. Don't get it. The Pope got that backbone of God. You know he can change Scripture. <laughs> Everything the Pope says, you know, it's spot on. That's not true. There's not another name. There is not another name under heaven. What does that entitle under heaven? Everything. Everything, don't it? Yeah. There's not anything left out. That's China, Russia. I mean, that, that's everything. That's all of those people. It doesn't matter. There's not another name. That never will be. Jesus Christ left heaven. Left paradise, left heaven, left his, left God, and could come to this earth and be half man. You know, and we know, we know how pitiful it is to be human at times. How it hurts. How, you know how we have pain. How, how we have troubles in our lives, tribulations. And he he chose to do that. People says, well, you know, he was God. Well, he was God, but he was tempted, and he was done every single way that mankind can be done because that was necessary. He learned what? He learned obedience through that. And those
tribulations a lot of times that we have, it helps us learn obedience, our acceptance of God's word when we when we when we see those things. We in the book of Hebrews, chapter five. I'm going to read uh, verse 9. Okay. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. That obey him. It's not a fear. You have to obey what he has said. In the first recorded words in Luke, and Jesus said, what was his words to his mother? He said, well, don't you know, I have to be about my father's, my father's business. That was the first recorded words. I have to be about my father's business. God's plan before the earth was formed was for we, mankind, to have salvation through his son. That plan was in place then. The Old Testament does nothing but speak of that. The first prophecy of his son is found in Genesis chapter 3. And all through the Old Testament, we're told what his name is going to be. We're told where he's going to be born at. We're, we're told everything there is about him. When he came in Matthew, he came lowly, birth, born to, to Mary. And his earthly father, Joseph, was a carpenter. And he, he, he was raised that way up until he started his earthly ministry when he was about, they believe, about 30 years old. His ministry was about three years long. He was sacrificed, they believe, around 33 years old. And the last words that he said on the cross was what? It is finished. His first words is what? Got to be about my father's business. And his last words is, it is finished. What do we think he done in between that? He done his father's business. That's what he done. That's what it was all about. And that's what we have to do. But the first thing we have to do also, turn to, turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We must be the same way Jesus is in our conduct, in our lives. We have to have that must in our life when we go to dealing with something. In Hebrews chapter 11, somebody there, read verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if we believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we believe that he came to this earth to do his Father's business, we believe that the last words on the cross was it is finished, we must have that faith that we believe in him. We must. We sang a song, I believe, that trust and obey. Yeah. You have to trust. You have to believe. But it's, it goes right along hand in hand with obey, obedience. You know, they say that, 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 that baptism is not a necessary part, that there's no word. Of course, they don't, I haven't read in the book of Acts where it says he commanded them to be baptized. Talk, but, but, yeah, but it is it is a must that we obey him. And that obedience is not just what we want to do. When there's something going on in our lives or something that we need to, to understand or we need to get better, we need to go to the Word of God and find out what we need to do through that. And in the book of Proverbs, beginning at, at, at chapter 10 and going through chapter 25, if you cannot find an answer to what you're seeking about in this life, come to me because I, the, from chapter 10 of Proverbs, it starts moral virtues and contrary vices. And all the way through to chapter 25, that's all it is, is moral virtues and contrary vices. So that's really a lot to do with what we st struggle with in life, isn't it? Contrary vices, 
and a moral virtue that we need to have instead of that Bible. <coughs> so when we when we look at that and we see that from Proverbs chapter 10 all the way through chapter 25, it's nothing but moral virtues and contrary vices. It tells you what kind of man you ought to be. Tells you what kind of woman you ought to be. Tells you what kind of man you need to stay away from. Tells you what kind of woman you need to stay away from. Tells you what strong drink does to you. Tells you what a lazy person does. To you. It, it, it tells you everything. You can go through that and find. Now, it may not have the exact word that you're looking for if it's some word today, but it'll have an example of what you need to know about that part, about the contrary vices with that. But we must, we must trust and we must obey beyond a shadow of a doubt. If we don't want to obey, we're not putting our trust in the Lord. When issues of today arise, and there's so many issues of the day that divides this world, all kinds of issues, the answer is very clear. You take whatever issue it is, and God has the answer for you. And it doesn't matter how you feel or what your opinion is, it matters what God has said on that issue. That's what, that's what matters. That's what trust is and obey. And we must have that. Turn to the book of Acts again, uh, chapter 16. Chapter 16. Acts 16, and, uh, <clears throat> verse 30. The greatest question anybody will ever ask is right here. Acts 16 and verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? What do I have to do? What is the requirements? What is the conditions? What must I do to be saved? And in the very next verse, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. We just read, where you have to believe, you have to trust. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, verse 17. Keep on reading. And, huh? Keep on reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to read 10 through 34. <laughs> And, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed the stripes, and was baptized, he and all his great way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. The same night, the same, what must I do to be saved? Boom. We're going to so many of them just take verse 31 oh, yeah. and stop. That's right. Yeah. Well, then you need to type in Mark 16. You yeah, need to do it. Paul Harvey and get the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul Harvey. That's the greatest question that anybody can ask. We, we need to remember the word definition of that word must when we look at the next verses, 32, 33, and 34. It's the same way today as it was on that night. There's no difference. You know, one of the things that I have said numerous times, and I probably, you know, say, Lord willing, I, I hope that I get to say a lot more <coughs> times. <laughs> Though these people, this jailer, these people here, they're no different than me and you. They're no different than me and you. They have spouses, they have jobs, they have children. They have hunger, they have worries, they have finance problems. They have souls. They have souls. They're no different than, than us. What is said in the first century, I've had, I've had a couple of people, oh, that's, man, that's old. That's, that's old, you know. That, it, it's not the same today. We're no different. When we draw our last breath, our soul is going to depart from this earthen vessel that we have been given. And it's going to go to the Hadean world if the world still stands. And it's either going to go where? Where? Paradise. Torment. That's what's in the 
alien world. It's the land of departed spirits. It's where they go. It's where Jesus went when he rose up for a while. That is where we're going to go. If you read Luke 16, it talks about the rich man and Lazarus. It tells us exactly what the Hadean world consists of. And the comfort that Lazarus got in what? The bosom of Abraham. And the torment that the rich man had where? Across that great gulf in torment. In torment. He got his while he was on earth. So we can't place, we can't place our value. We can't place our destiny on what this earth offers us. It has to be trust and obey God's word. It's a must. It's a requirement. It's a condition. It's something that we must meet. And we must have faith in that. Because if we don't, I just I just put it to you straight out. You're kidding yourself. You, you're, you're kidding yourself. You're putting your faith in something besides this. If you're doing anything other than this, contrary to this. And in this world today, I won't get into it, but in this world today, <laughs> we're told not to judge. You know, that's that's the biggest bombing. We judge every time we get up. Every morning we get up. We judge how far it is down that first step. If we don't judge it right, we're going to fall. We might break our neck. We make all kinds of judgments. And what, what's the Bible tell us to how to judge? Righteous. righteous judgment. How can we judge righteously? By what? By knowing the book. By knowing God's Word. That God's Word is the, is the pole that we measure things by. Whatever this world says, well, you have to accept this. This is all right, you know. Well, one of the things that gets me nowadays is this alternative lifestyle that they're saying. And these furries, oh man. These things that's going on, it's just, it's just, it is incredible. It is incredible. And they're telling us that that's what we've got to do. No. And if you're tolerant, if you're acceptance of that, if you condone this, you're not following this. Because that's an abomination. It's against God's word. And if something's against God's word, no sisters, as faithful Christians, we have to be on the other side of that. We have to be on God's side. And that's just how... Must it is. That's how necessary it is. We can't be. Now, I know these times that you know people may have to do some things, but if we begin in the book of John, chapter three. Somebody get there. Read up. Start at verse five and read through verse seven. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. You must be born again. And it told us where we begin. Up in verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And they, they actually thought, <laughs> these physical Pharisees, I don't know how you ever thought a grown man was going to go back into the womb of his mama and be born again. That's totally, you know. That's talking about what? what? What is that talking about right there? Be born again. Man must be born of what? And the spirit. What is that talking about? He's talking about baptism right here, right now, in this time frame. And it's the same thing today. Without being baptized, without being born in that water and river baptism, without contacting the precious blood that Jesus Christ shed, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God can be looked at two different ways. People look at the kingdom of God two different ways. One way is the kingdom of God's heaven. No question about it. What's the kingdom of God here on this earth? Church. Hmm? Church. 
the church. It's the church. So you cannot enter into the Lord's church without being what? Baptized. Turn Acts 2. Somebody turn to Acts 2 at verse 47 and read that.
understanding that the authority in our lives is God's Word. And we worship that way. We conduct our services according to the authority of God's Word. That is exactly what we do. And in 2 Second Corinthians, I guess 1030 is about it, eh? Kathy, I guess she, you always go over out there. She said, you need to stop. I know you're just making it trick out so you think they stay at 12 o'clock or whatever. She said, you need to stop. I said, well, when they tell me to, I will. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the reason why we must do the things that we talked about. Read that for us. Verse 10. For we, go ahead. For we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So, in, in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it says, it's appointed to man once to die, and then what? Then the judgment. We are going to, whether or not we believe it, whether or not we accept it, we are going to stand in front of God and give an account to what we've done. And when we're contrary to God's word, God is going to judge us that way. And it won't be an unfair judgment. God's judgment, and thank the Lord, it's not up to no man, not up to no congress, not up to no lawyer, not up to nobody but God. Amen. He's going to judge us according to his word. Amen. And it's not unfair because what are, you, what are you holding in your hand right now? The word. Your directions. Well, you, you got the word. And that mystery that was not, and we're going to look at that in the next lesson in the kingdom of God, that mystery that, that the prophets, a lot of them wanted to see it. They didn't see it. Guess who sees it? We do. From what? Genesis to what? Revelations, everything in between. We got it all. Questions, comments? In uh, this Hebrew 4, verse 13, mm -hmm. and there is no creature hidden from his side. And all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. That's right. Amen. Amen. Period. That's right. Period. We must we must give an account. And there's place after place that we can go and where we see that is the way it's going to be. Anything else? Ecclesiastes says the same thing. 